Chemistry Lecture Number 15, Law of Definite Proportions and the Law of Multiple Proportions. French chemist Joseph Proust was the first to observe the Law of Definite Proportions. The Law of Definite Proportions uh, says that specific substances always contain elements in the same ratio by mass. This means that if a compound is broken into its elements, the ratio of their masses will always be the same. For example, suppose I break uh, 100 grams of water apart into hydrogen and oxygen. And if we do this, uh, you'll end up with 11.11 grams of hydrogen and 88.89 grams of oxygen. So, 100 grams of water broken apart into hydrogen and oxygen. And then what we can do is, since this is the smallest number between these two, we're going to divide both these numbers by 11.11. So 11.11 divided by itself is 1, and then 88.89 divided by 11.11 gives you 8. So this tells us that uh, for every 1 gram of hydrogen in this particular sample, there's going to be 8 grams of oxygen. All right, so that's with this particular sample of uh, oxygen. Excuse me, now suppose I take a different sample of water, and this different sample of water has a mass of 254 grams. And we take this uh, second sample of water that's a bit heavier, and we break it apart into hydrogen and oxygen. So 254 grams of water, if you break it apart into its component elements, will give you 28.22 grams of hydrogen and 225.78 grams of oxygen. Once again, this is the smallest number between these two. So 28.22 divided by itself is 1. And then 225.78 divided by 28.22 gives me 8. So in this other completely different sample, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen by mass is 1 to 8. So in all samples of water, uh, the ratio by mass of hydrogen to water is going to be 1 to uh, 8. So that's the law of definite proportions. You're always going to get the same proportions no matter uh, what uh, sample uh, size you have. The ratios are going to be the same. So let's try this problem. When 120 grams of salt is broken into sodium and chlorine, we obtain 47.33 grams of sodium and 72.90 grams of chlorine. Find the ratio by mass of sodium to chlorine. So. We'll do this, so it's 120 grams of salt, and when we break it apart, we get 47.33 grams of sodium and 72.90 grams of chlorine. The smallest number between these two is 47.33, so I'm going to divide both these numbers by 47.33. So 47.33 divided by itself is 1, and then 72.90 divided by 47.33, that's going to be equal to 1.54. So, um, for every one gram of sodium, you'll have 1.54 grams of chlorine. So this is going to hold true in all samples uh, <coughs> excuse me, samples of salt. Every sample of salt, every time you break it apart, the ratio of uh, sodium to chlorine will always be 1 to 1.54. So the proportions are always definite. So that's the law of definite proportions. Now we're going to talk about the law of multiple proportions. English chemist John Dalton noticed that uh, two elements could form more than one type of compound. He observed that there was a pattern of ratios in how the compounds were formed. And this pattern is called the law of multiple proportions. Now I'm going to give you the definition, but it's a mouthful and it's frankly hard to understand just by reading it. But here we go. 
law of multiple proportions, the masses of one element that combine with a fixed amount of another element to form more than one compound are in the ratio of small whole numbers. What the heck does that mean? Well, to explain what the heck all this wordage means, uh, I have to set it up as sort of a problem. So to illustrate, we know that carbon and oxygen can form two types of compounds. Uh, you can form carbon monoxide and you can form carbon dioxide. Now, suppose we take a sample of 28 grams of carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is a you know, poisonous gas produced uh, in the fumes of uh, automobile exhaust. If you breathe it too much, you'll die. Anyway, um, I have 28 grams of carbon monoxide, and I break it into carbon and oxygen. And if I do that, I'll end up with 12 grams of carbon and 16 grams of oxygen. Now, suppose I have... Um, 44 grams of carbon dioxide, and with this different compound, um, we'll break it apart. So we take 44 grams of carbon dioxide, and we'll end up with 12 grams of carbon and 32 grams of oxygen. Now this problem is rigged so that uh, each time we'll end up with 12 grams of carbon for both types of uh, compounds. So just rewriting what we've done so far. We've taken 28 grams of carbon monoxide and broken it apart into 12 grams of carbon and 16 grams of oxygen. We've taken 44 grams of carbon dioxide and broken it apart into 12 grams of carbon and 32 grams of oxygen. Now, we're going to compare the oxygens. And we want to see if there's a ratio between these two. So between these two, the smaller value is 16. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 16. So 16 divided by itself is 1, and then 32 divided by 16 is 2. So, 32 is uh, 16 times 2, or the ratio of oxygens between these is 16 to 32, or it's a you know, 1 to 2 ratio. 32 is a multiple of 16. So, the oxygen seems to be combining in these whole number ratios. So as long as the amount of carbon in both samples is the same, the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide will always be twice as much uh, as the amount of oxygen and carbon monoxide. Twice or two is a small whole number. Uh, thus, comparing compounds, oxygen combines with carbon in ratios of small whole numbers. So that just means that whenever you compare these two compounds that are different but have the same constituents, um, the ratio of the constituents is going to be in small whole numbers, and that's holding another element in fixed quantities. Here the fixed quantity is 12. So I hope that clarifies a little bit what law of multiple proportions means. Let's try a problem that might uh, clarify it a little bit more. We've got 128.64 grams of iron 2 oxide, and this decomposes to form 100 grams of iron and 28.64 grams of oxygen. So it's a compound made out of iron and oxygen. Now we have another compound made out of iron and oxygen, 142.97 grams of a different compound, iron 3 oxide, decomposes to form 100 grams of iron and 42.97 grams of oxygen. What is the whole number ratio of oxygen between the two compounds? All right, so. Two compounds, both made out of iron and oxygen. We decompose them, and uh, when we decompose it, we know the amount of iron in both compounds is the same. Uh, we want to find the ratio of oxygens. So, here's the summary of what we've got. 128 grams of iron oxide breaks apart in 100 grams of iron and 28.64 grams of oxygen. 142.97 grams of the iron 3 oxide, we break that apart, we end up with 100 grams of iron uh, and 42.97 grams of oxygen. The amount of iron is fixed, it's the same. Um, the amount of oxygen varies. So we want to find the ratio of oxygens right here. All right, well, the smallest number between these two is 28.64, so I'm going to divide both of these by 28.64. So 28. 0.64 divided by itself. That's going to give me 1. And then 42.97 divided by 
28.64. That's going to give me 1.5. So the ratio of oxygens here is 1 to 1.5. Um, 1.5 is not a whole number. It has a decimal there. But um, we can make these ratios whole. If we multiply both of these by 2, so 1 times 2 is 2, and then 1.5 times 2 is 3. So we find that the whole number ratio is 2 to 3. So that this means that uh, if we keep the amount of uh, iron fixed, uh, the, there'll be two masses of uh, oxygen for uh, every three masses of oxygen in the iron oxide. But anyway, the ratios here are 2 to 3. Small whole number ratios. So that's what the law of multiple proportions means. You keep one quantity fixed, you compare the ratios of the other things, and you find out that you can uh, get them in small whole number ratios. To obtain a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 15, Law of Definite Proportions and Law of Multiple Proportions.